This is a video summary of a monitoring configuration, which is a necessary part of any performance engineering project. This is following on from a first cycle of testing where we did a test plan, we did some test artifact review, we did a test report, we did an, a business uh, style presentation of the results for a single cycle of testing where we really were establishing what's the capability of a solution. We weren't trying to do any tuning in that. If there was any major problems, we would have highlighted it. But now that we've done that, we're going to go to the next step and do some performance engineering to see how much performance we can get out of this app that, uh, that we tested in the first cycle. Now, what we need to do first is some monitoring. Now, this app is a serverless app. So it's using test data services, OpenID Connect calls, and we're doing thousands per second of these calls. But it's all serverless, running on AWS with Lambda, DynamoDB, um, API, uh, with all the API um, services of, uh, of AWS. So how do we monitor that? Well, if we were to use AppDynamics or Datadog or some other paid software, we'd be able to uh, use some connectors and grab that data direct. But um, in this case, I'm not doing that. I'm using Load Runner, and I'm going to show you, for the sake of an example, how to grab data from somewhere that doesn't want to give that data up particularly easily, uh, and there's no out-of-the-box way to grab it. Um, and also, as an example of how important it is to actually do a summary, a video summary of the way you've set up monitoring. I frequently go to projects where monitoring had been set up once by someone a long time ago and it's broken, it doesn't work properly and people can't figure out what was done to get the same monitoring now as what was set up previously. So do yourself a favor and do a video summary of how you've set your monitoring up. You'll be thankful for yourself and your colleagues who follow on from you will be very thankful. So what are we monitoring? In this quick example, I'm showing you that during the test I ran before, which is not in another video, I'm just, I just ran another test, um, I've actually got things like DynamoDB for calls to get uh, timings for get latency, um, sorry, for the get on an OpenID Connect call for the token table. Um, and you can see here that our average latency was, for instance, 2 milliseconds, right down the bottom of this graph, but our maximum was 60 um, occasionally, or sorry, the average maximum was 60. We, we had uh, 90 milliseconds here, we had 157 milliseconds there. So this data is all accessible from the AWS um, console, but it, it doesn't last for very long. After a little while, after a number of days, the granularity disappears and it gets aggregated. If you use this monitoring, as I'm about to show you, it's part of your test. You're getting the data real time during the test, helps you be able to correlate things, which is really handy, uh, but also it stays with your results so that you can do comparisons later on and see, oh, was this average too much or was that average too much? Also, we've included in here things like the average concurrency for a particular OpenID Connect call and what the maximum concurrency was. So that's all useful data. So how do we do that? Well, when we want to get data from AWS, we need to really do it via a Lambda call if we're going to do it ourselves. So what I've done in this, what I'm going to show you is how to expose all of the AWS CloudWatch monitoring to an API. And when we do that, we need to do it in two parts. The first part is to find out what time interval do we need to use to tell uh, AWS what data to retrieve, what monitoring uh, statistics to retrieve, and then what statistics to retrieve for that time interval. So this is what we, our final product is going to be like. I'm going to show you now how to get there. So the first thing we're going to do is create a Lambda function. So I'm going to create a Lambda function and that Lambda function, I'm going to call it current time. So this is really to show you how easy it is to create a Lambda function and how to um, make it accessible as an API endpoint. So it's creating now. And this is the default. It's a bit big. I made it big, but don't want it too big. All right, let's just change the view so that we can see it a bit more easily. If I show you what the default template gives me, if I hit the test button now, I've put a, some data in which I don't need. 
we get this uh, response code body hello from Lambda. That's a default vanilla template. If instead of that, I copy from my notepad from the other window and show you what this looks like and walk through. What this is doing is it's getting in JavaScript the date and it's setting a new variable called today to that. It's getting the current time with a math function to round down the number of seconds, uh, which is get time from today in milliseconds divided by a thousand for seconds. So it rounds it down and then it works out what's the current minute, what's the current five minutes, previous five minutes and so on. And that's because all of the metrics for AWS CloudWatch are in one minute, five minute intervals. And you can have high resolution metrics to the one second level, but you actually have to write them yourself. And, uh, and I haven't done that uh, in, this, in this example. So if I now hit the save button and then hit test, we will get a response back and that's got some nice numbers in there which we can use to drive our metrics. So that's a good place to start. I'm going to now show you how to make it so that's an API endpoint that you can call. So I'm going to create a REST API. Create your first API, sure. And we are going to say uh, we want a, a new one, a new API, and we're going to call it current time. And we are now uh, are going to create a method. So the method we're going to use for this is just a get. It's going to be a simple get request. When we do this, we have to tell it what's the Lambda function we're going to call. Well, it's current time. It knows about that, which is handy. Save. So now we've created a, 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 an API gateway uh, resource so that we can call that Lambda function. Now if I hit the test button and say test, we can now see that the response we get back is current time, start of this minute, start of previous minute and so on. This is very important and now we've got an API gateway request that will give this back. So let's now... Um, deploy this API. New stage, let's just call it um, demo. So once we've done that, we've got this invoke URL. If I now hit this uh, open link in new tab so I don't overwrite this screen, I now have this response, which is pretty good. So current time, if I hit it again, now everyone can access this, it's open to the world at the moment, and that's fine for what we're doing. So if I now take that call, copy, and I paste that into Postman. So let's go and grab Postman. And um, we've got Performance Engineering, Video Summary 6 is the one I'm in. Let's add a request, it's a GET request. Let's post this into here and say send and we get our uh, current time, start of minute, start of previous minute and everything, which is handy. Let's save that to, um, we want to save it to the YouTube, um, where is it? We want to really save it to the one that we're working on. Okay, save to there. So now it knows we're working on this one. So now if I I'm in here and I click on this get request, I get my response back. So now I need to grab these values. Now to grab these values so that I can, I can use them in the subsequent call, I will grab this text from my notepad paste. So what this is doing is it's taking the JSON response from from here and it's putting into a variable called JSON data and then it's getting current time by accessing current time from that structure and then it's setting it as an environment variable. So if I now hit send, that's now populated all these environment variables. So now if I go up to my environment here and view my environment, I can now see current time ends with 095, ends with 095. Uh, so now I've got um, in my Postman collection of one, uh, I've got a request to get the time details, and I've also got um, environment variables that are set. 
which is which is good the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to actually fetch the data from um, uh, from AWS the actual uh, the actual metrics themselves so to do that I'm going to move to one I've already created because I don't want to take the time uh, to do this so slowly AWS monitoring now this is the one I'd set up before so you can see it's really using the same code get current time I've just got it with a, a custom domain here so that it's it's mine instead of just a generic generic one and I've got that same test script here which sets environment variables and the next request is to get CloudWatch data and it's going to use a body of um, this request here which has in it the start time which I if I hover over oh, it doesn't show me if I hover over but if I at least hit the send button we now get a response back and that is a timestamp a sample count there was 604 records in that minute the average response time was 4.49 seconds maximum was 13 and the units are milliseconds if I if I hit it again after another minute I'll get different numbers so so this is um, the next request in a series so the first request is to get the time and the second request is to get the metrics to show you what that looks like let's go into lambda let's go out of this mode let's create another function create function and get starts create function takes a little while to get to, to create but not too long Now instead of the default one, this is all we actually need to get data from uh, from AWS. We have to specify a region. Uh, I'm using the wrong region in this area. Never mind. Um, we basically try a call to get metric statistics, and we pass in event. Now event is a body, which is a query, which in this case would be this so to do this we go to configure events we paste in here and uh, we actually have to put a, uh, a time in here but I won't do that right now this is this is what the the body looks like that's not a number that's why it's complaining it's expecting a number to be there um, so this is the the event I won't let me create let's just put a one in here let's put a two in here create I'll give it a name so now if I was to hit test it won't work but uh, it, what it would do is it would take that body it would pass it in as event and that would then mean that uh, get metric statistics is called with event and then we would get a response back from that because we're doing an await and promise so we're making it synchronous and we get the the result data points I now we might get more than one data point so if we get more than one we want to get the most recent one so we do a sort and then we return the most recent data point otherwise we get an error or return nothing so that's what you need to do if you copy this code down and run it in your environment to expose any metric to a query and the query in this case is um, this so if I take that and if I if I set that up in AWS and I then do another API gateway configuration to expose that as a post instead of a get so now I've shown you the basic building blocks but this is not really meant to be a full lesson on on how to set stuff up in AWS but it's like a, a window into it then when we make this call here we're passing in that body like that body you just saw and we're getting a response back from AWS so if we do a different a different one for example we get different metrics so in this case the body was show me the successful request latency from the DynamoDB table of uh, OIDC tokens and it will come back and it will give it to us so that's that so how do we go from this to having it in our load runner scenario well that's a good question what you do in load runner 
is you go to view gen um, and this is view gen here you simply create a new script and just a web HTTP HTML script will be fine and you say design insert into script a rest API now in that rest API we can go and we can actually put in the URL of the API so if we go now back to and we take this call the first one the one that gets us our time and we just say insert step and if we change our, our logging so that we can actually show you all the data that comes back and we hit run then we can see that we actually get the, the data back. We see the current time, start of this minute, and so on. So if I, um, if I now extend that, I don't need to look at this script anymore. If I go back now to Load Runner, and I go to Metrics Collection, and I show you what that script looks like, this is actually the, the script that actually grabs those metrics in the real test. So it's got quite a few lines in it. Now this is one metric at a time. There are better ways to do things. And those other tools like Datadog and AppDynamics have a much cleverer way of getting stats. But you have to uh, buy that and set that up. And in this case, I'm just showing you how to do something raw. So in um, Load Runner VUGen, I'm doing these web reg save param JSON calls so that we're expecting a JSON response and we're looking for current time, start of previous minute, um, start of previous five minutes, and so on. We're making this call to get current time. And then we are going to make a call to get CloudWatch data, which is one of these ones I just showed you how to create. And I'm passing in this body here. Now, when we want to do this in Load Runner, I'll show you how that is done. Let's just add another one in here, which we will throw away. We won't actually use. We go design, insert into script, add REST API, and we'll go back to Postman, and we'll paste in that uh, forget CloudWatch data, and then we'll say it's a post, not a get, which means that we can have a body. And the body, we're going to, and the content type, we'll call it JSON, and we post the body in, from uh, from Postman even, just direct like this. And then when we say insert step, it inserts it and it puts all of the quotes around there and everything. So that's how easy it is to put the, the actual post in. But as you can see, I'm making a number of calls and each of these calls is looking for in the response various values from the JSON response. And then what it's doing is it's doing a LR user data point, which means that we can have a data point called in this case AWS DynamoDB OpenID Connect tokens get latency average milliseconds as opposed to minimum and maximum and then it refers to these variables which were fetched up here. So if we do that and then we run that script then while a test is running which there is one running now we actually get real-time data every minute um, of these uh, responses and, and these values. So in this case, uh, our get latency is uh, currently averaging two milliseconds and had a maximum of seven milliseconds. So there you go. That's the basic way I set up the monitoring, and uh, I've, I'm allowing myself to to get exposure to what's in AWS. So if you did those two API calls in your own environment, then Obviously, there might be security implications for that, but if it's just making a call to get metric statistics, then it's not really a high risk and you could actually lock that down. Uh, but if you were to do that, then your scripts can choose what metrics to fetch from the whole AWS account and which ones that you want to be able to plot and record and troubleshoot against for root cause analysis. So this is a walkthrough of how I've set up the monitoring so that when we run a test, we can start to dig into uh, what was going on in AWS so that we can uh, root cause analysis, 
the performance issues and uh, ideally uh, tune and then prove that we've got increased performance. So I hope you find this interesting. The next video will be on the performance engineering step of actually digging into the problems. We're gonna run a test, uh, get it to the point where it starts to slow down, figure out what's causing the slowdown, and then we're gonna tune it. Hope you find this useful and interesting. And like I said, do what you can to video summary the setup of your monitoring so the next person after you is not left in the dark on how you set it up especially if it breaks and they've got to fix it have a great day